Hey everyone, Matt here with Night Run Studio. Welcome to another tower defense tutorial video. In our last video, we got things set up so that our robots can be given some speed, they can advance on the map and actually deal damage to our tower, destroying it over time. However, at this point, there's no way to actually defend our tower and that's pretty lame given this is a tower defense game. So in this video, we're gonna take that defender sprite that we created earlier and get her to actually shoot some projectiles in defense of our tower. Let's get started. So the very first thing we're gonna do is a little bit of setup with our defender sprite. At the moment, it's just a sprite dragged onto the map. But as we did with our enemies, I'm going to create a parent game object by right clicking and creating empty. We'll call this one defender. And then I'll just put the sprite on here as a child of the defender. This allows us to do most of our programming on the defender, but make our sprite be the thing that handles all the visuals. Now, one little note, you may notice that when you dragged it on, you got some strange values in your X, Y, and Z, separating the sprite from the parent object. I always like to take a sec to just zero those out. That'll make sure that the sprite is exactly centered on the actual game object. At this point, we need to get a couple of extra graphics here. You'll notice I've created this beautiful bow and arrow sprite, which I'll just drag into my sprites folder. I'll take this bow and we're going to make it a child of the defender so that later on it will move when the defender moves. Mine's a little bit large just because of the way I created it, so I might just scale it down a tiny bit to 0.8. And then I'll use the rotation tool to get it looking good. At this point we can grab our arrow sprite and drag it into our hierarchy. And this one we do not want parented to anything, so it'll just be by itself in the hierarchy. I'll then just kind of move it down in front of my bow here for now. Now there's a couple things we want to do with this arrow. So we're going to want to head over and add component. And first off, it will need to move. So it's going to need a rigid body 2D so that we can add physics to it. The only thing I'm going to do here is take off gravity. You might want that later on so that it falls to the ground. But for now, we're just going to keep things simple and have it just shoot in a straight line. We also need it to be able to detect when it hits things. So for that, we'll add component and you can use whichever collider you like, but I'm going to use a box collider 2D. We can open that up, click edit and then just resize it. I always like to make my colliders a tiny bit larger than the object itself. That way it gives the player a benefit of the doubt and on a near miss, it will still register that it's hit the enemy. With all that done, we're ready to get scripting. So let's head into our scripts folder where we can create a new C-sharp script and we'll call this one arrow. Now all we wanna do with our arrow is just make it so that once it is spawned into the game, it starts moving in a straight line away from the bow. This is actually going to be very similar to our robot movement, which causes the robots to always move in a straight direction to the left, multiplied by whatever their speed is. Essentially, we're gonna be doing the same thing here. So we can start by just making a reference to the rigid body so we can talk to it. We'll make this public and we'll call it arrow RB. We can then head down to update. We can set our rigid body's velocity to be equal to, and we'll just use vector two dot right to have it move to the right. Now at this point, things would actually be working. It would move to the right, but we don't have any control over the speed. So let's make another public variable. This one will be a float or decimal and we'll call it speed. Let's just initialize that to two and a half for now, though we can change it in Unity if we want. You'll notice it doesn't like two and a half. That's because in Unity, decimals often need to look inside of something, like here where we look inside our rigid body to find our velocity. However, here we want to use a plain old decimal. So we'll just put an F for float so it knows how to read that decimal. Then we'll just multiply our rightward movement times speed so that we can change the speed of the arrow in game. One other little optimization is just you'll remember in our robot movement, we used fixed update, which runs exactly 50 times per second rather than every frame. This just makes things a little bit smoother. So let's go ahead and make that change. We can now click on our arrow, go to add component, and we should have speed already, but it needs to know which rigid body to talk to. So we can just grab the arrow's rigid body and drag it into that box. Now when we play our game, the arrow should move forward toward the enemies. And obviously we're not quite done yet, but off to a good start. Now what we want is for the arrows to actually be instantiated right at the tip of the bow. So it looks like our defender is shooting. To do this, we'll create another C-sharp script. I'm just going to call mine bow. So the first thing our bow is going to need is to just actually know what it is that it's spawning into the game. For this, we'll make a public game object reference to our arrow. And I'm actually gonna call this one arrow prefab. Prefab just stands for prefabrication and it's just a object in Unity that we make ahead of time and then get spawned into the game throughout the game. 
Now update is where we're going to be constantly checking for whether or not we should be spawning this object in. And we're also not going to use the word spawn, we're going to use the proper term instantiate. We'll put this in brackets. Now instantiate actually takes in three arguments, it needs to know three things in order to make that arrow move. First it needs to know what it is instantiating, in this case it's the arrow prefab. We then put a comma, we tell it where to instantiate it, we want it to actually just pop into existence right where the bow is, so we'll just put transform.position, so it'll find the position of the bow itself. And finally it wants to know if we want to add any special rotation. We do not. So we're just going to put quaternion, which is a fancy coding phrase for rotation, and dot identity, which will just have our object maintain its original rotation and not do anything special to it. So we can now click on our bow and add that component. Now it just needs to know what it is that it's spawning in, so we'll grab our arrow from the hierarchy and put it in there. Now this will have some problems, but it's also kind of fun. <laughs> so as you can see, it is doing what it we've told it to do, but not necessarily exactly what we want it to do. So the reason for this is because right now we are instantiating in update, which is every single frame. So we're getting a lot of arrows. We need to uh, limit this. So first off, let's create a cooldown timer. So we're gonna make a public float, which we'll call cooldown. And this will be how long it takes between arrow shots. I'm just gonna initialize this at two and a half, but we can change it later. We also need a private float called timer, which is actually gonna do the counting down each time we shoot. Now we're going to make our timer countdown. So we're going to go timer minus equals, and we're just going to put time dot delta time, which will just count the timer down based on actual time. So every one second it will go down by one, for example. Now one problem though is that our timer is currently starting at zero, which won't work. So let's initialize it so that at the game start, our timer is equal to our total cooldown time. Now that the timer is actually counting down, we can hide our instantiate code here behind an if statement. So let's put if. And essentially we just want to make sure that our timer is less than or equal to zero. We'll put instantiate in those brackets now and you'll notice I missed my equal sign so we'll just add that back in. And now whenever our timer does get down to zero or lower it will spawn in our arrow. However we still have a problem. Once it gets to zero it will stay there and now it will just start to mad spawn the arrows anyways. So let's reset our timer after each shot. All right, that's actually working pretty good. Our arrows are shooting every two and a half seconds. Now you may have an issue if you've put a collider on your defender where these arrows are hitting that collider and firing off at strange angles or something like that. That's actually pretty easily fixed by just going into your arrow and in the box collider, you can change them to use trigger. This will make it so that they can still trigger events and things in code, but they don't actually interact with the collider on the defender. We'll get more into that in the next video. Now the other problem we're having is that these arrows are spawning literally forever and they're also not dealing any damage. We'll get into a lot of those problems in the next video where we will have the arrows have a lifespan and we'll also get them dealing damage. But for right now there's one other problem and that's just that you probably don't want to start your game with an arrow already on the map. However if we delete this our bow will no longer know what it needs to spawn. So we need to make an actual prefab. So let's go to create folder We'll call this one prefabs. And in order to create an arrow prefab, all we have to do is drag our arrow down into the folder. You'll notice it turned blue in the hierarchy and it also made this neat little object down here. We can now delete the arrow from our scene and our system will still know that what the arrow prefab is. The only problem at this point though is that our bow has now lost its reference. So we just need to grab that prefab from down below here, drag it into that box, and now our bow will be able to find the arrow prefab without the arrow having to start off in the game. All right, so things are now working properly. We are shooting a prefab every two and a half seconds. As mentioned before, we still need to add damage and give these arrows a lifespan, but we'll get there in our next video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers. <laughs>